Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Colonel Lyles, Deputy Chief of Staff, Personnel for the Tennessee Army National Guard, and I will serve as the Master of Ceremonies. Today, we're here to honor one of our Korean War veterans and fellow Tennesseans, Mr. Earl G. Taylor. With Mr. Taylor this morning is his wife, Eleanor, his nephew, Don, and his wife, Joanne, and Miss Joey Payton. I would also like to recognize and welcome Major General Max Hastings, the Adjutant General, Tennessee National Guard, Major General Robert Harris, the Assistant Adjutant General, Tennessee Army National Guard, Brigadier General Don Johnson, the Assistant Adjutant General, Tennessee Air National Guard, and Command Sergeant Major George Hall, Senior Enlisted Leader for the Tennessee National Guard. At this time, I would ask Chaplain Mark Phillips to deliver the invocation. Would you bow with me as we pray? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, what a wonderful privilege it is to be able to gather at your throne in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've provided. We thank you, Father, for your promises of security and hope that is found in your kingdom through your Son. Lord, we thank you for this occasion. We thank you, Father, so much for the sacrifice of Mr. Taylor. Lord, I pray that you would restore unto each one of us the spirit of patriotism as we look back to what he has accomplished. Father, for his wife, his friends, his relatives that are here with him today, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy upon each one of them. We pray for thy presence in this ceremony, and most of all, that you would be glorified above all other names. And we ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Phillips. At this time, I will invite the Adjutant General to provide comments. Sir. What a great day it is to be in Tennessee. 1950, June the 25th, the North Korean Army invaded South Korea. A couple of days later, President Truman authorized the United States to become involved in this conflict. Mr. Earl G. Taylor answered the call. A native of War Trace, Tennessee, just down the road here, was a member of the 2nd Infantry Division. And he arrived in Korea on Christmas Eve, 1950, at Pusan. On 22 January, 1951, Mr. Taylor was wounded and sustained injuries near Tegu, Korea. Korea is a war that sometimes that we have often forgotten. It was a three-year war. The 36,000 Americans gave the last full measure in that war. 1.8 million Americans served in the war. Now you compare that today to the 12 years that we've been in combat in Iraq versus the three years, and you can see the intensity of what took place in the peninsula. Today, we're going to right a wrong. And that wrong was is that when you're wounded in combat, today we hold a standard, and just a, a few weeks after someone's injured, they receive a Purple Heart that meets the criteria. But this has been a little while in coming, and I didn't say that our military always gets it, gets it right the first time, but we're going to get it right today. The Purple Heart was established by General George Washington, our first president, at Newburgh, New York, on 7 August, 1782. And it's presented to members of the military who's been wounded in combat. Today, we're going to write that wrong. Mr. Taylor, if you'll come forward, please.
present the order. Attention to orders. The United States of America, to all who shall see these presents, read. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Purple Heart, established by General George Washington at New Bern, New York, August 7, 1792, to Private First Class Earl G. Taylor, United States Army, for wounds received in action on 22 January 1951 in Korea. Given under my hand in the city of Washington this second day of October 2013, signed John M. McHugh, Secretary of the Army. still heroes among us. Thank you for serving your country. 